All right, so a limit from calculus. So this is leading us into the, the most critical piece of calculus. Um, but we're not quite there, so we're going to start off slow. Uh, what we're going to be using is what's called the difference quotient, the limit of our difference quotient. And this is what that is. So for any x value, the limit of a difference quotient is an expression of the form, the limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. At the bottom of your 12.2. Yeah. Okay, so we are on 12.2. Yeah, we're finishing it. Okay. Now, if you um, plug into this, so if, there, if you use direct substitution into the difference question, it's always going to be in an indeterminate form, okay? Meaning that in order to find this, we have to go through and simplify. Otherwise, like, oh, I plugged everything in, I'm done. No, you're going to end up as an indeterminate form and therefore defeats the purpose of what we're doing. Okay, now y'all are all gonna be mad at me because no, I did not leave you space to write down the example. Um, but there's, you know, some white space to the left, right side of your thing over there. Um, but here's our practice problem. We, we all got it wrong. I just said, sorry. All right, so for the given function, we're gonna have f of x equals x squared minus one. And we're gonna be looking at x equals three. Uh, yes, for a second. Okay. Why the hell you would try? I know. All right. Um, so the first thing we're going to do, since it's at x equals 3, we're going to plug in 3 for x into the difference quotient. So do you see how I used the difference quotient and then I plugged in 3 for where x would be? Do we all see that? Yes, yes, yes. All right, we're going to evaluate each one of these. So this is function notation, which means that into the original function, I'm going to plug in 3 plus h, right? Into the original function, I'm going to plug in 3. Yes? Okay. So I plug everything in. Boom, 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 boom. I still can't do direct substitution because it would end in an indeterminate form, okay? So therefore, I got to keep simplifying. We're going to keep simplifying. Yes. When I have 3 plus h squared, that means that there's two of them, and I have to do FOIL. Agree? Here, I just got to simplify. So I'm going to do FOIL, and I'm left with 9 plus 6h plus h squared. I'm going to distribute my negative. Remember, when there's more than one term, the negative goes to both terms. So it became a negative 9 and a positive 1. Okay, now I'm going to combine like terms and eliminate wherever I can. All right, so what can be eliminated here? Nines, the ones. The nines and the ones, right? Because I have a positive nine, a negative nine, a negative one, and a positive one. So I'm going to eliminate those. Once I eliminate those, I'm left with 6h plus h squared divided by h. What can I eliminate now? There we go. I can factor out an H and then I can eliminate an H, right? Because if not, what's still going to happen? I'm still going to be an indeterminate form and I don't want that. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and factor out an H. So this is where we're at. This is explaining why we're doing it. So we factor out an H and now I have an H factor in the numerator and an H factor in the denominator. So what happens to those two H's? They cancel, and all I'm left with is this. So my limit is as h goes to zero of six plus h. Now can I do direct substitution? Yes, because I won't get indeterminate form anymore. So I'm going to plug the h in, pew, 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 and I get six. So my limit is six. Okay. All right, so we're going to talk about this more in 12.3, but this is kind of a preview of what's kind of happening. All right, turn over.